This is uh, really my first attempt at making a full video and a recording of a Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator flight. Here I am trying to uh, fly to Paro in Bhutan, uh, one of the world's most uh, dangerous uh, airports. It is surrounded by peaks as high as 18,000 feet. Uh, it's in a valley. Uh, the approach from either direction is very difficult. Uh, only captains who are licensed can apparently fly there. And uh, apparently only a few dozen pilots have that license. And the first officers can't land a plane there. It's, it has to always be the captain. So I'm actually flying there from an uh, Indian airport called uh, Bag, Bagdogra, which is about uh, 80 nautical miles uh, from Paro. Paro is kind of northeast from here. So I have just now set the plane, uh, started the engine, I have uh, set the various altitudes that I will be flying at and so on uh, and uh, ready to take off now. Uh, so let us uh, go ahead. I'm flying a Deha TBM 930, which is a turboprop uh, carrying can carry about I think uh, six passengers. Uh, it's a kind of executive plane. Much easier to fly than a commercial jet, of course. This taking off from that jet craft. I've set a time of about 5 p.m. in the evening. Uh, sun is in the west there. I just activated the autopilot. We are climbing to 17,000 feet. I'm just giving kind of different views that are available in the Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator. Uh, if of the plane it can be from inside the cockpit or external. Uh, sometimes what are what I call fixed cameras on the plane. Uh, that's the tail tail plane. See me there in the cockpit. We are flying northeast, uh, the sun is kind of west, which is left of the screen. You can see that side is brighter. I picked that time thinking that the sunset kind of uh, rays will give a better uh, appearance. It will perhaps heighten the spectacular nature of the approach we are going to take. Uh, but uh, really, that wasn't the case as you will see later. Autopilot uh, maintains the plane on the GPS path that we have 
planned out for it at the beginning of the flight as well as the altitude uh, it sets that i set the altitude and it uh, flies to that altitude uh, with based on the controls that i effect speed is not controlled by autopilot it's fully under my control You are supposed to keep your landing lights off actually at this kind of altitude but I am keeping it on now because it is easier when I land I don't have to worry about lights and things like that. There are too many things to do when I am landing at Paro. You can see the kind of mountain peaks uh, on the left of that window. Uh, that is the Everest uh, that you can see in the distance in Nepal. Everest range I mean. When you fly from Kathmandu, uh, you can see the range, uh, the, the peaks much better than here. We are quite some distance away from the peaks. This kind of cockpit view, the left, what is left is what is called the primary flight display. In the middle is the GPS uh, screen, it's called the flight uh, uh, GPS screen. See there are Saki 1146, Sierra Alpha Kilo Yankee 1146, that's me, that's my uh, pilot uh, ID in MSFS, Microsoft Flight Simulator. The flight number of this flight is uh, in the MSFS log is uh, SAK 123, Sierra Alpha Kilo 123. I'm learning video editing also in the process, uh, so I've actually chopped off quite a bit of the flight, uh, so we don't see the full length of the flight. I've chopped off the, the cruising flight uh, so that we approach the, get to the approach fast. So I'm moving about what I'm moving in the flight management system. I've, uh, that's where I put in the path, the flight plan and everything. That gives me the kind of waypoints and the heights at various different altitudes at various different waypoints. That's given me, me that uh, that computer there, so uh, I kind of refer that up as I go on. Uh, based on that, I set the altitude at four different waypoints. Just went past the waypoint uh, Subsu S U P S U, and going towards P R 888. P R 888 is the transition. Uh, PR 888 waypoint, I can take a left turn and go and land in runway 15. Or oh, I can take a right turn and then there are waypoints there, come back and land on runway 33, which is the same runway in the opposite direction, 15 and 33. I'm, I'm sorry, what I mean by 115 is 150 degrees, and 33 is 330 degrees for the uninitiated. you will find 150 and 330, 180 degrees apart. If you approach the runway from one direction, it's 15, and the way it's 33. It is telling me to get down. To 14,000. 
Just get in the deeper into the valleys. You can see how difficult the approach is in the GPS screen up there. Not like in some of the airports that we know, we can't fly straight in there. We have to curve around, go between the valleys and approach, and pick up. See what I mean? I started flying in the evening thinking that that will dramatize the effect of sunlight on the mountains and the peaks. But it's kind of made it more shadowy as opposed to making it so dramatic. Maybe I should fly in the morning sometimes when the sun is on the opposite direction. But I thought the reddish tinge will somehow improve. If you managed to quickly see the, the GPS screen, you would have noted that we that we fly over this ridge and turn right. over the ridge and then turning right now seeing that screen we are, we are in the final approach valley if you can call it that See at the right, at the end down there, you can what you can see is a, it's a very famous monastery in Paro. Uh, and and the, the the pilots actually use that as a as a when they fly visual flight rules, they use that as a kind of a visual waypoint. That monastery. When you see the monastery, then you know where you are. Your orientation is clear. How to manage that approach is then clear in their mind.
only thing is the altitude uh, directed by the ATC air traffic control is somehow incorrect at this point. It asks me to climb. So I, have, I just take it off the uh, uh, autopilot and then fly from here. I would do that anyway. In any case, the, the final bit of the approach is on visual uh, by the pilot. It asks me to climb. Climb and maintain 13,000 feet. Seiki Sierra Alpha, Kilo 123. Just took off the autopilot. I'm flying manual now. Seiki Sierra Alpha, Kilo 123. Climb and maintain 12,000 feet. Climb and maintain 12,000 feet. Seiki Sierra Alpha, Kilo 123. We kind of Thank go left here and one, then two, three, speed, not above one, four, five, not. Then I'll take a keep right speed, turn and then kind of swerve a bit left to align myself with the family. So I'm taking a little right turn. There's the runway. This is the valley next to where we were flying. Still surrounded by mountains over you can see. I'm almost scraping this mountain side. I got to align as well as lose altitude just after this mountain. Now all this is easier in my plane, but in a real commercial jet, it's much more difficult. Touchdown, good landing I must say. Slightly off center line, but good touchdown. I've got to turn the plane around now and then go down the runway back towards the terminal. Or else I can go down to the end of the runway and take the taxiway which is running parallel to this runway. I'm taking a turn. I'm actually speeding up the video and also chopping off bits of it to just save time uh, because I want you to get a look at the airport as well which is quite nice. You can see how surrounded we are with mountains right around us. I've just tuned into ground control and asked for uh, clearance to go to uh, uh, instructions for taxi to gate. So they just gave me clearance. I'm just about to get there now. See the clouds are a bit red. That is the setting sun on, on west, in the west, which is the right hand of your side. Uh, lighting up the clouds into a reddish tinge.
ती काच कम्प्लिटली टू आली quite nice airport actually uh, some of the msf airports are built up uh, so that they look uh, proper some are a bit generic uh, but this particular one has been built up quite well i think So you have to switch off the plane and put the parking brakes on uh, for my flight to be locked in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Otherwise, it doesn't log it, and then I lose the flight. There you are. Okay, thank you. Hope you enjoyed it.